Hello again. So our next speaker is going to be uh, Stefan Bechinsky. Uh, Stefan works uh, for Microsoft as a technical evangelist and he do a lot of stuff with IoT. Uh, and today he is going to be speaking about Python and Raspberry Pis. As, as you can see, we will have also some practical examples. So please give a warm welcome to Stefan. Okay, welcome everyone. It's really great to see uh, you know, the real people, not the people you know, inside the computer. Uh, my job is to do a training, so I do, I'm a trainer, so I do a lot of trainings for our customers. So I don't see my customers, I just see the screen and now I see the real people. I'm super happy about that. Do you know what's this? Breadboard? Yes, this is, and you look what I searched, breadboard mess. You know, so if you start to play with the electronics, you have a lot of examples. You know, how to use the breadboard, how to connect stuff together. And it's really nice for playing, but if you want to do a real product, or if you want to just move it from one table to another, because you are typically working at home and kitchen and the kids come, hey, we want a food, then you need to move it somewhere. This is super fragile. And especially if you buy a breadboard, which is cheap, you know, AliExpress stuff, the contacts are bad, you know, it's really, it's really fragile. So you want to have something better. So today I will speak about uh, like an electronic kit, which is uh, developed by company uh, Seed Studio. And I use this one uh, for education because one of my hobby is, uh, you know, educating the high school girls. So I'm a member of a Czechitas organization. That I don't know if you know that. It's an organization supporting women in IT in Czech Republic. And I do a lot of trainings for them. And one of the trainings I do is about the electronics. So the girls can play with the electronics, they can build something. And I like this one because they are real connectors. You can use it together with Python and Raspberry Pi. You can use it with Arduino. And it's really easy to assemble it together. So you don't need to know how to use the soldering iron and you don't have this you know, crappy mess on a breadboard. You just need to use the connectors. The way how it works is very simple. You take a head for your Raspberry Pi. You just connect it to Raspberry Pi. You can see it here. So it's my Raspberry Pi. I just connect the head to it. And then you have a lot of available connectors. Of course, you need to understand a little electronics. So you need to understand what is a GPIO. Easy. PWM? Pulse width modulation. This is the trick how you can, you know, give the, you know, some amount of the energy, not just zero or one, you can get some energy. Okay. Another question for the guys at the front here. <laughs> UART. It's our, our famous serial port. So do you know, what to, you know, do you know the functionality? of the Raspberry Pi that you have a text console on URT, so you can connect it directly to your computer just using the USB to serial converter and you get the text console in your computer. It's a really great functionality. The analog, it can measure the amount, you know, it can measure the voltage. Uh, this is really interesting here. If you know the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi doesn't support analog input. On the Raspberry Pi, you have just GPIO. It means zero or one. Zero volts, three dot three volts, nothing between. And there is a chip on this uh, head. There is a chip doing the conversion from analog to I2C. Uh, I2C, it's a bus for communicating with some sensor, a very popular one. And yeah, that's all what we have there. And what you need to do you just need to buy some fancy sensors, fancy actuators. You just plug in and you are done. So you don't need to do any soldering, nothing like that. And the connectors are you know, quite precise, so you don't have any issues. Then you need to move it so I can easily take it. I can shake it and nothing happened. You cannot do this with the breadboard. Okay, it's all right, nice. Now, 
you have uh, three options how to control the electronics. So let's go here. So this is a, uh, this is a text console from my uh, Raspberry Pi. It's connected via Ethernet. And let's do something very simple. That is it. The first option, how you can control the hardware here, you can use a standard Python library for controlling GPIOs. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, the Python is already there. If you download the image, Python is already there. And one of the pre-installed libraries, pre-installed modules for Python is called rp, rpi.gpio. And this allows you to control the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi. So GPIO pins, Raspberry uh, Pi pin out. Uh, I want some picture here. Ah, here we go. For example, this one. So the GPIO pins, this is this connector on the side. And then you have a lot of pins you can control. So it means you can set the zero voltage on the pin or you set the 3.3 volts on the pin. Actually, this is the, you know, how electronics works. You're just setting the electricity on some physical wire, zero or some voltage. Here we speak about 3.3 volts. Be very careful. Raspberry Pi doesn't survive five volts on a pin. So if you send, if you have some sensors, and you use and the sensors you need, for example, five volts to feed it, you cannot connect it directly to your Raspberry Pi because you will physically destroy the chip. Unfortunately, it will not blow out, you know, no nice visual effects, it will just die, okay? So be careful. And those pins you can control. And the way how you can do it in, in Python, you just use this library. And using this library, you just tell, okay, I want to control the pin with this number. Uh, to make it easy, there are two systems, how to name the pins. And you need to choose, you need to pick up one, because it can be the number from this connector, you see here. So it can be really number of the, from the connector, or it can be number from the chip itself. So you need to pick one of the systems. Then you need to tell if you want to read from the pin, or if you want to write to a pin. So this is a difference. And then you can start to use it. Probably you understand the code. This is the, usually if you work with the electronics, this is the first code you will write. You will start controlling the LED, blinking the LED. So let's try it. I hope I wrote it correct. So Python 3. Blink. Yes, it works. Here we go. This is the LED. So LED is connected somewhere. And you can see we have, uh, there are four wires. On every cable you have uh, four wires here. The one is ground. Then you have, of course, the, the power, 3.3 volts. And then you have a two pins, like a two uh, data cables you can control, you can use. Because sometimes for this LED, I need only one wire to control it. But for example, if I want to control uh, this one, so I have a small display here. For this, I need to, for control, I need two wires because I need to send some data, more complex information, not just simple zero, one, high, low, or how we call it. So this is a one option. So you can control everything directly. Uh, of course, if you just need, if you need something very simple, you know, you need to, the, you need to know that someone, you know, press the button, you need to switch something on off, then this library, this one, is really far enough. Or, of course, you can have something more, you can have something more complex. So for majority of sensors, 
you can find some libraries for Python, okay? The way how it works is that the majority of the sensors communicates by some standardized communication. It can be I2C, it can be one wire, it can be something else, but there are just few standardized way how you can control something and how you can get the data from it. So then there are some basic libraries, for example, for com I2C communication, which is one of those systems. And on top of those standardized libraries, you have a specialized library for some displays or from some sensors and so on. So if you want to get the library, the easiest way is that you can download the library directly for the Groove sensors. So you can see I have the folder Groove there and you just get it, you just get it from GitHub, you install it using uh, pip and you are done. And then you have a huge list of supported sensors. So you can find a lot of things here. Uh, there is a one catch. For some sensors and especially for some displays, this library is using unsupported Python library working with signals and this doesn't work on every Raspberry Pi. So remember, for some Raspberry, you, on Raspberry Pi, you have a different physical chips, okay? So the, the, the CPU is different. So for some new, for the Raspberry 4 and Raspberry 3, a lot of libraries are not working actually because of some unsupported low level library controlling the signals in a, uh, in a CPU, okay? If you will get into trouble like this, you can search for some third party libraries. The libraries you see here, that are provided by those libraries are provided by uh, Seed Studio, by the company. Or of course, you can use almost anything you find on internet because there are some sensors are very common. So for example, do you know what is this one? This sensor? Distance, okay? If you have a car and you have those sparking sensors, you have exactly this there. Of course, different waterproof package, but exactly it works the same way, okay? Uh, this one is very popular sensor, this blue one. It's a DHT11. It measures the humidity and temperature. It's very, very popular one. So if you have those type of the sensors, there is a good chance that you will find a third party library. Give me a sec, uh, I have it for DHT, I think. Uh, less. Cannot type. No. This one is from Seed. So let's try, wait a moment. TDD, uh, LCD. Oh, okay, I forgot the one which is not using the sensors from, Never mind. But in general, for some common sensors, you can find existing libraries and you don't need to use the one from, for example, from Seed Studio. The way how we are looking for libraries for some electronics is very easy. Because there are not so many producers of, for example, of sensors, there are few of them worldwide. But there are a lot of companies selling you the boards like this with some sensors. So every time you want to control anything, you are looking for a number for the ID of that sensor and you don't need to know who developed the board where the sensor and connectors are, okay? So for example, if I, I want to do some, if I want to measure, for example, the temperature, the very common sensor for temperature is DS18 B20. This is a very popular one, Python library, and 
you will find probably the library very quickly. So this is the way how you can get those libraries because typically at the beginning you don't want to deal with some low level communication. You don't want to deal, you know, how to parse the information from uh, sensors, you know, how to typically, if you want to do it, typically you need to understand how to work on a bit level. So you will do some bit shifting, all those, you know, fancy stuff. But, you know, at the beginning you don't need it, okay? So just download the existing library. If you have the library, so let's do, for example, this one, this DHT I show you. So if you have the library, typically you need to tell library, which is here. Uh, sorry. So typically you need to tell library where the sensor is connected. So you need to know where to connect it. And again, in documentation, you will find where to connect because some sensors will just connect to GPIO pins, but some must use some, for example, I2C, or it needs to use the serial communication. Then you need to really connect it correctly into correct physical pin. Uh, if you, if we look quickly here, so I try to make it bigger, you can see that every single connector actually occupies, actually occupies two physical pins, okay? So you see this one is 1670, next to one, is 1819 and so on and so on. So sometimes you need to know really what are the, the correct numbers because sometimes you just tell, okay, it's on pin 26, which is the case of, uh, for example, this is the case of uh, LED or this is the case of this DHT sensor measuring the humidity and, uh, humidity and temperature. It just needs a one wire for communication. But some other sensors or actuators, so for example, if I look here to uh, this one. So this one, as you can see here, you need, a, you need a two pins, okay? So be careful where you connect it because you know this, this plug, the numbers are really there. So you cannot use, for example, the 16 from here and I don't know 19 for here because the connectors doesn't work this way, okay? So you must know where to connect. So take the library read the documentation where to physically connect it, and then in library you need, and then in your code you need to tell where is it. And then you can start playing. So for example, if I run this one, this will work as a clock. So you see I have some numbers there. Or we can do something more fancy here. I can measure temperature here. So I use this DHT sensor. I cannot type. So we have a 19 degrees of Celsius and 24, no, and 24 humidity. Yeah, can be. So. So nice, so we can measure something, but how to use it, you know, what is the reason to do this? Of course, you can play with it, or typically you want to use those numbers or you want to control something remotely. Again, you have a lot of options how to do it, and one example, one example I have here is to use uh, MQTT. Do you know MQTT? MQTT, cool. MQTT is a communication protocol. It's a machine-to-machine -machine communication protocol. It works the way that you 
have a broker, server, and you send the message to some topic. So you are a publisher, you are publishing a message to some topic, and then you have subscribers interesting in a topic. And it distributes your data. So this is the easy way how to distribute data between two systems. Of course, there are more ways how to do it. Another very common protocol for this is AMQP protocol, but AMQP protocol is super robust. It's not so easy to work with it. MQTT is super easy. So I have an example here. So let's again work with my sensor. So what I do here, I connect to MQTT broker. MQTT broker runs in my Raspberry Pi. And you can see that I am publishing temperature and humidity. So I have, a, I have one a topic groove slash temperature and another topic is groove slash humidity. And if I run this code, it starts sending the temperature and humidity to my MQTT broker. And then other systems can subscribe, other systems can subscribe to it and start to work. And as an example, which is very popular when you are working with IoT, is Node-RED. Uh, actually, the Node-RED is written in JavaScript. You know, be careful about this. But this is a super easy way how you can get data from this typically MQTT, do some processing, control it. Uh, do you know what is it, uh, robotic process automation? Have you heard about this? For example, Microsoft Power Automate or Blue Prism, I think it's IBM, IBM stuff and so on. So this is the way how you have some ready to use components. You don't need to write code. It's no code, less code system. You don't need to write the code, but you can create quite complex system. You know, just putting together some building blocks. So what I have here, I am listening. This is the MQTT subscribe. So I am, this component subscribes to my MQTT broker. It gets the data from my topic, temperature. And then I have another component, which is this one. And it, it can visualize my data. So now I can go here to my, to different. Part. And this is my user interface. So you see the temperature and humidity here. And it's real time data. Because I'm pushing the data, everything goes through the MQTT because MQTT is really designed for almost real time communication. Okay. And opposite side, I can control something. So I run another code here. So let's run this one. MQTT. So I just run the code here. And I have a small display. So I have my small display here. It's an OLED display. And I can control this display because my code is listening for the messages on MQTT broker. And uh, PyCon 2.22, Python SK, done, deploy. And now I can send a message. So now I have this message on my display here. So using the hardware, typically MQTT, you can get data from the hardware, you can control it. Of course, the application controlling the hardware, it can be whatever, it can be no thread, it can be something total else, you can write the Python because the support for MQTT in Python is very good and you know super easy to use. So I can show you the code here. So you just, again, you connect to broker, you subscribe to a topic, and then you're just waiting for the messages and you can process the messages as they are coming. 
So my goal was to show you, don't be afraid about the electronics. With the groove, it's just connector. You don't need to use the soldering iron, you just need to know how to read documentation, you know, to connect it physically correct. This is probably the most complicated part here. And then using MQTT, you can control it, you can get data from it, and you can start to do some automation at your home or just some fancy toys for your kids. And now we have five minutes for questions. Thank you. Ah, I see. Okay, uh, so what is what do you recommend for people who want to start coding for Raspberry after this presentation? Where to start, what to buy? Okay, you need to buy Raspberry. And then you are doomed. There are no Raspberry available worldwide. And probably situation will change this November. So if you have a lot of libraries at home, you are rich. You can sell it for five times more money than you bought it. So buy the Raspberry. Then my recommendation, all the stuff I'm showing you here, and uh, disclaimer, I am a Microsoft employee, I'm not employee of this company, but there is a company called uh, Distrelets. It's a European, uh, it's a, they have the, this company operates in Czech, Austria, Germany, whole European Union. And they have a very solid uh, amount of groove components for reasonable money, uh, reasonable uh, you know, money for the sending and so on. So I, I usually use this one because it's much easier than to buy it from uh, China directly. Of course, from China it will be cheaper, but it will probably end up on the customs and it will take ages to get it. Typically, you get it in uh, like uh, three days. Uh, the common language to use is a Python. We are on Python conference, so the Python is very well support for everything you for everything you see here. But now the biggest issue is uh, Raspberry Pi. It's not available anywhere. Okay, and there is one more Raspberry. It's called Raspberry Pico. Maybe it can be interesting for you too. This is this one. And uh, it supports MicroPython. It's a small chip and it supports MicroPython. And there is the version with, uh, with uh, Wi-Fi 2. And this is available and the cost is like four or five euros, not more. It's a super cheap one. Okay, next question. Okay, so what is the size of the project or required functionality when, is, when it is better to use Raspberry Pi instead of simple microcontroller like Arduino ESP? Ah. So the biggest limits of Raspberry Pi is uh, power consumption. So if you want to do something, if you want, you know, with all the things you see here, you can, you can achieve almost the same results. But of course on Raspberry Pi, you have a full, you know, it's easy to use because it's a real computer. You can use all Python libraries and so on. So it's less complicated to use it. For uh, Arduino ESP, you need a different knowledge and you need, a, let's say, deeper knowledge of the electronics and, of, you know, and how to program embedded systems. The biggest disadvantage of Raspberry Pi is a power consumption. Using the Arduino and ESP, you can create a device running on batteries for a month, Raspberry Pi, you cannot fill with the battery for a long time. So I will have uh, the next weekend, I will have a speech on uh, OpenAlt. I will show how to control Lego using the Python and Raspberry Pi, this one. And if I want to feed it, you need battery like this and it will probably work like a few hours. You know, it's a quite high capacity battery, like powerful, you know. The Raspberry Pi, this stuff, it needs a lot of energy. So from my point of view, Raspberry, I need to feed it with, uh, you, know, you know, you cannot feed it with the batteries, the others you can. Okay, so uh, we probably have the last questions, last question, and I decided to pick uh, this one because we do a lot of things with microbits, so uh, it would be, 
good for uh, the people here, I think. So how does the Raspberry Pi compares to the BBC Microbit? Uh, BBC Microbit, uh, there is no operating system. It used the, uh, it's uh, just microcontroller. So you write the application using the MicroPython. And of course you don't have full support of internet connectivity, stuff like that. But the, the very quick one, uh, there was the question related where to get the project. If you go to, if you go to, if you search for. Oh, I highlighted the question. Okay. If you search for MacP, which is like a uh, magazine about Raspberry, then you can download it for free. They have issue every single month. And they have a lot of, there are a lot of free books. And there are a lot of uh, books with some projects. Uh, you see, for example, this one, Raspberry Pi project with the full description with the code and so on. So you can get the inspiration, inspiration here. Okay, I'm one minute over time. I yes, I, I just uh, gonna say that uh, thank you, Stefan, for a uh, great talk. There is uh, more questions, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time, so you can uh, find Stefan in. I will be at front of the room, so if you have any questions, I will be waiting at front of the room. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.